You ever wanted to get your hands on one of the most expensive and one of the most interesting deep learning models of our time? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this episode. We're going to be taking a look at Stable Diffusion. What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode of Code That, where I try to build stuff in a ridiculously short time frame. In this episode, we are going to be building our very own text to image generation app using Stable Diffusion and Tkinter. This is going to allow you to type in a prompt into a text box and have an image generated using machine learning, or if you want to call it, AI. But before we do that, we need to appreciate the rules of code that. First and foremost, I'm not going to be able to look at any pre-existing code or doco or stacko. If I do, it's a one minute time penalty. That brings us to the time limit. For this particular code that episode, we are going to have a 15 minute time limit which could get interesting as it usually does. But last but not least, the cash -o component. If I fail to make that time limit, it's going to be a $50 Amazon gift card to you guys. All right, ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, ready to do it? 15 minutes on the clock. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, we need to create a new file and we're just gonna call that app.py. And then we've got to import a bunch of dependencies. So first up, we need to import tkinter as tk. And then we're going to import custom tkinter. I'm desperate to achieve this time limit for once. Uh, we're going to import that as ctk. And then we are going to import... Oh, Lord. Uh, so from Kilo, we're going to import image tk. So this is just going to help us render our image from stable diffusion back to our application. And then we need to bring in our auth token. So this is an auth token from Hugging Face. So you're able to get it from your own free account. Uh, so from auth token import auth underscore, oh, let's zoom in, auth token. And then what do we need? So we need a bunch of stuff from PyTorch. So from, uh, we need PyTorch, so import torch. From torch import autocast. And then we need to import the stable diffusion pipeline. So from diffusers, import stable diffusion pipeline. I think that's it. And then, all right, so then we need to create our app, create the app. So we are gonna go app equals tk.tk .tk, and then app.geometry. So this is gonna set the size of our actual app. So we're gonna set it by 532 by, I think it was 622 was ideal. And then app, the title. <laughs> is going to be equal to uh stable bud you can name it really whatever you want um and then and then we need to change the color theme so ck.set appearance mode oh no ctk ctk.set appearance mode we're going to set that equal to dark okay and then what do we need to do so then we can run this app just by running app.main loop but we don't need to run that yet because we had we're not going to have anything in it. But if we run it, let's just try. Uh, so Python app dot pi. Let me just double check. My head's not blocking that. So we should get a little pop up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, cool. So you can see that that's our template, right? Then we need to add in a somewhere to enter a prompt. So we're going to use the entry field. So prompt equals ck ctk dot ctk entry and then we are going to set the height equal to 40 the width equal to uh 512 so we'll set it to the width of the entire app or with 10 a margin on the side um so font actually text font equals to Arial 20 and then we need text color so this is just going to set the color of our prompt box. So text color, we're going to set that equal to black. And then we want to set the color of the actual box. So FG color is going to equal white. And then we need to place it. So prompt.place equals X is going to be 10. And then Y is going to equal 10 as well. So it's going to be a little bit further down. Okay, so if we run that. 11 minutes. Okay, we're good. All right, so you can see we've got a box here. We can type stuff into it. We're looking good. All right, then what we need to do is we need a placeholder for where our image is going to go. So we're going to create a frame. Uh, we'll call it L main equals CTK dot uh, label. CTK, come on, CTK label. Woo, 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 woo. All right, 
and then uh we can set that equal to height h-e-i-g <laughs> crazy when you there's a time limit tile coding is just insane uh height and width is going to equal 512 by 512 because that's what our stable diffusion model is going to return back to us and then l main dot place x equals uh all right so we need to work this out so let's just put it at x equals 10 and then i think y we're going to set that to 110 for now but we'll see how it looks once we actually render an image okay so that is our placeholder for our image then what we need to do is create a button so it's going to be button we'll call it trigger equals ctk dot uh, ctk button and then height is going to equal 40 width is going to equal uh 120 then we can probably copy the rest of this let me hide this side bit because we don't need that uh all right so then we can probably copy this Okay, so text one equals Arial. Do, 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 do. Uh, we want our color here to be white. We want our button to be blue. Wait, hold on. No, I've just gone and applied that to our label. Wrong. This needs to go down here. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Text color is going to be text color is going to be white. FG color is going to be blue. So that means our button will be blue. And then we need to place it to so trigger dot place. And X is going to equal ten. So if we've got a height of 40 for our prompt box plus 10, so if we put in a bit of a gap, let's say y equals 60, that should be okay. So let's just run this again. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, we need it centered. Um, so uh, where's my calculator? So if our box is 532 divided by two uh, minus 60, because that's half the width of the button. So we want it at 206, I think. X equals 206. Let's just close our app, run it. Let's just make sure that's centered. All right, that's looking way better. Uh, we need to, uh, do, 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 do. so we need to configure the text. So trigger dot configure text equals generate. Close that down. How we're looking. All right, that looks way better, right? So we've got, we can type in stuff, we can hit generate. Right now we don't have anything generating, uh, but we'll get there. So we are now going to create a function. So def generate pass for now. And then we're going to pass that function to this button here. My head's covering that. The command is going to equal generate. Um, and, that, and that is fine for our button. Then we need to do some magic stable diffusion stuff. So now first up, we need to specify a model. So model ID equals comp viz forward slash stable dash diffusion dash v1 dash four so there's a bunch of different models that you can actually try it then we're going to create a pipeline and we're going to set that equal to stable diffusion pipeline dot from underscore pre-trained pass through the model id seven minutes we can make this guys we can make it okay so model id um oh lord no, I've thrown uh, so uh, revision. So the beauty of it is that if you load this particular revision, you can um, load it into a GPU with four gigabytes of VRAM. So you should be okay. Um, I think it's for FP16. And then you need to pass through torch underscore D type. Torch D types. I think that's it. Equals uh, torch dot float 16. And then we also need to specify the token. So use underscore auth underscore token. We're going to set that equal to this token that we just imported up here. And that's available from um, the Hugging Face website. So you can go into settings and generate that. Then we need to send our pipe to our GPU. So pipe to, and then we're just going to say CUDA. We can actually create a new variable. So device equals CUDA. And then pipe to device. Cool, so that is our model loaded and then we need to use it over here. So we need to then go and create an image. Um, so with autocast device, so this is gonna send it to our GPU. We then go pipe, no, image. Maybe I was too confident, guys, <laughs> pipe. And then we need to get the prompt. So the prompt is to get the prompt, we can type in prompt.get. Get, come on. 
Uh, and then we need to specify guidance scale. So the guidance scale is how closely we want stable diffusion to follow what we've written in the prompt. So I think the higher the value, the more strict it's going to try to build that image. The lower the value, the more flimsy it's going to be. Probably better time for that. Um, okay, so then we need to pass through samples. So we're going to extract the sample out of that. And then we need to extract the image. Okay. Um, and then keep saying, um, then create the image. So image equals image TK dot photo image. I think it's that. Yes. And then pass through image. And then we can go and set our frame. So over here, we need to configure that, that L main section. So then, but first up, let's save our image. So we can type in image.save and we'll just save it as um, generated image.png. So this way you can actually bring it up and use it wherever you want. Then to redo our image, so lmain dot, lmain dot, uh, configure image equals image. That looks okay. Save. Let's run it. Takes a little bit of time to start. I'm going to pause it because we're starting. All right, we've got four minutes 50 on the clock. Come on, guys, we can make it. So this looks good. This looks good. All right, so we've opened. Let's test it out. So I'm just going to hit start. Let's go. Um, uh, space ship landing on Mars. Okay. I res Lucian. So if it works okay, we'll start to see stuff happening down here. You'll actually start to see it generating. You'll get a bit of it like a progress bar. First time you do run it, it does take a little bit of time. That looks okay. So you can see the progress bar has popped up. Oh no. Oh no, we've used all the memory. Try to alloc- No, 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 no. Oh, no. So revision equals FP16. This should work. We might be out of memory because of the GPU torch off load 16. That should be fine. Is it torch D type or torch D types? Oh, no. All right. So revision equals- I think it's torch D type. I don't know. Let's try that. How much GPU is being used? Should be fine. The only thing is that I can think that maybe it's either torch underscore D type or torch D types. Come on, come on. P16, I'm pretty sure it's that. Oh, come on, I want to make it the time limit for once. All right, it's up. Uh, Earth space ship landing on Mars. 4K. Hi, Rez. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. It was Torch D type. Yes! Come on. Ah, uh, no. Photo image has no attribute save. Hold on. No, 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 we've got an error. We've got an error. Uh, so this should be image.save. Throw that up there. Come on, come on. Make this, we can make this, we can make this. All right, restart. So I think it was, it was meant to be torture underscore D type, not D types. Not plural, singular. Come on, come on, start up. Two minutes, come on. All right, a uh, uh, space, space ship landing on, on Mars. Okay, I res. All right, so that's generating. That's on my GPU. Looks like it's okay. That's actually kind of good-ish speed. I've got a twenty seventy something. Guys, we did it.
One minute 32 left on the clock, guys. Come on, your boy's done it. All right, hold on. There's one thing. So we need a little bit of a border at the bottom. I'm not happy with that size. So uh, if I just make this 632, I think we'll have a little bit of a border at the bottom. Sorry, my OCD is kicking in. It has to be good. One minute 14. Come on, we can we can perfect this. Come on, come on. Just taking a ton of time to start up. I mean, it is a pretty hardcore model. All right, uh, space, ship, landing on Mars. 4K, high res, res. Cool, generating, generating. On 36 seconds. Guys, 28 seconds left on the clock. We did it. So you can obviously generate other stuff as well, right? So let's let's let the time go down. So uh, I could say uh, Rick and Morty uh, planning a space heist. And you can see it's going to generate again. Boom. Take a look at that. Rick and Morty planning a space ties. <laughs> That's our time up, guys. We've managed to make this one for once. Yeah, boy, did it. Come on. You got to give him props for that. But take a look at this. So, like, it obviously allows you to build and, and leverage some of the most state-of-the-art deep learning models that are out there. Stable Diffusion is absolutely amazing, guys. And it's obviously a free alternative to something like DALI 2. And it's super great now that other thing as well is that you can see it's also we've saved out our image so by writing uh image.save over here you're able to grab that image if you wanted to go and send it to someone or if you wanted to show somebody your absolutely amazing artwork um if i try another one so a 3d 3d uh charizard realistic 3d charizard in the forest realistic uh 4k high resolution so you can obviously generate a ton of stuff the beautiful thing about this is that the guys have made it open source you can go and use it you can go and try it out yourself personally think it's absolutely amazing look at my high resolution charizard slightly on fire but there's a t absolute ton of stuff that you can do you can um lord of the rings scene fighting orcs from movie okay there's also a website called prompt hero i think it's called prompt hero where you can go and find a bunch of prompts and, and test those out so if you wanted to go and see what's actually possible with them or what's actually possible with these marvel take a look at that that actually looks like it's from the movie that's absolutely amazing anyway guys you've seen it you've been able to build this stable diffusion app you can give it a crack i'm going to link all the code in the comments below i'll catch you in the next one a peace Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of Code That. If you have, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. It really does make a difference. And we're on the road to hitting 100,000 subscribers. I thank you all so much for all of your support. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.